the channel guys, Review It TV. I appreciate you guys coming back and uh, tuning in with us for another great video uh, regarding the beast pack here. We got the can -Am Maverick X3 Turbo. Um, today we're gonna be actually doing our first service. Um, there's a lot of dilemma on when the first service should be done other than what the manual says. So probably uh, actually use the manual for an accurate description on when you should do your first service. But uh, the dealers are recommending that you bring the machine back into them at 500 miles and they charge like $500 to do the first service. So I'm assuming they're charging by the mile, I guess, a dollar a mile or something. But anyways, you can do this at home by yourself. You don't have to take it in. They do have some uh, computer equipment and stuff to check um, for codes and different things that may have surfaced during your first 500 or 1,000 miles whenever you decide to take it in. Uh, we are going to go ahead and do a few extra things besides just changing the oil. We're going to top off some fluids, check the suspension, grease some zerks, blow out the, the air filter, take off the uh, cover over the clutch, blow out the clutch, get all the dirt out of there. Um, just check the coolant levels and simple things like that. So we're going to go ahead and get this video started. We're not going to do the oil first. We're going to start doing some of the smaller stuff and work our way to the oil since the oil seems to be the messiest part of this whole uh, service. Uh, that way we're not dragging oil over everything else as we're doing it. So uh, let's get started. All right. So guys, we're going to show you a few tools here we're using today. Uh, and as far as what type of oil we're using from what manufacturer. Um, we're going to just be using some standard sockets here. Uh, metric, standard, whichever. Uh, probably metric. Um, we're going to be using some extensions. It's good to have a nice little socket wrench that you can uh, adjust. We're going to be using one of these big mouth funnels. It's kind of a smaller short version. You don't want one with the whole stem coming off because you won't be able to fit it underneath the drain oil plugs that we're going to be using. Um, one thing is that people are making um, their own types of hoses and stuff for funnels. Uh, to be able to get the uh, hose down to the oil fill plug area to be able to fill the oil back up. I went ahead and just got this 5-8 uh, heat heater hose um, and I'm going to cut it down so it's not so long. And I'll either use this funnel or another one I have, put it easily, it will just fit in there like that. Then I can cut this hose and then I can just stick it right down into the oil fill, dump my oil in and it won't make such a mess. It's a real tight area to get quartz of oil on its side down into the area where you're going to have to fill it. So. You might want to go ahead and rig up something similar to this. Just keep your manual around, guys. And another suggestion for me when I do specific things, depending on which uh, service it is and what needs to be done, I'll just jot a little checklist down real quick. That helps me not to forget to do something or to make sure I didn't put a screw or a plug or something back. Um, especially when you're not 100% familiar on everything about your machine. Uh, some people are, you know, they do this all the time, so it's like clockwork they don't have to think about some people you know might forget to put something back on or whatever and i don't want to do that so um we are using <coughs> um brp can -Am's brand of oil it comes with four quarts of oil uh it's a 50 weight we're using 50 weight out here in new mexico because uh it's warmer out here uh drier climate um they recommend 40 for more colder climates maybe back east up in new york new jersey somewhere in that area comes with four quarts of oil it comes with the uh seals and gaskets for the drain plugs and for the uh oil filter uh lid there's also a, a rubber seal that goes around that area um, so it does come with everything you need to do the basic oil change. So I do have some coolants here. Keep your uh, actual XPS coolant. It's great to get one of these. You want to use the actual coolant that's for the machine. It's just you're not having to guess if there's the right types of uh, chemicals or things inside the fluid that your machine requires. So it's better to just, you know, pay a few extra bucks and get the BRP brand. Um, tools, other than that, is just... Uh, uh, electric ratchet wrench guys I use this if you guys have one great if you don't then you're probably just gonna be using your standard uh, but I like to use a ratchet wrench area to get to the clutch cover so when I'm taking off those bolts you can get in there because some of them are too tight to be able to get a big wrench so other than that that's what we're gonna be using today guys so we're gonna go ahead and get the first step started okay guys so we're gonna take the clutch cover off first which is this guy we gotta take this little screw loosen it up which I already did but I just wanted to show you guys uh, what it is to uh, get this cover off. So make sure you loosen this guy right here. You don't need to loosen this one because you're not taking off the whole clutch assembly. You're just getting it loose and ready. So you just take a screwdriver in here and then loosen that like so. Once you get it loose, then you're ready to go. Uh, next, we're going to use a 5 16 I have a little ratchet wrench, an electric one. And I use a little tiny... Uh, 
extension, which is, you know, you can use whatever size you feel like using, but it gives me just enough room to be able to get in there and do what I gotta do. So you're just gonna take off these screws all the way around your clutch cover. Get you a little bowl like this one up here, and uh, you can just stick it somewhere and then put your screws in it as you're taking them off. I don't know if these ones are magnetic yet. If they're stainless steel screws, they're probably not gonna stick in the bowl, but just have a bowl somewhere you can put them in. Um, once we get that off, we're gonna blow off the clutch and clean out that area, and then we'll clean out this tube really good, and we'll get up here where the coolant goes, and we'll uh, blow out that area a little bit too, and then we'll get this back together, and that'll be the first step. So let's go ahead and get one of these screws off. See, once you get it off, you can just take it off by hand. And these aren't magnetic screws, as you've seen. I just dropped it so it didn't stick in the bowl. So what I'm going to do, if I can grab it, is I'm going to get the bowl and put it down low down here on the trailing arm. And I can put my bolts in there without it getting lost. So different angles, guys. get this one right here so we're just gonna go around this whole cover and take these off okay so we're gonna go ahead and take the cover off now we've gotten all the bolts out and just kind of pop it off guys it has a seal on it so it may be a little bit sticky when you first take it off but once you get it off this part comes off here you just want to be careful I mean you can just drop it and let it bang around but you can get it out a little bit easier so look how I got it out when you come back in, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to come down with the nose first, and then you're going to slide it in little by little. And then once you get it down in there, you're just going to wobble it around and, and like so. I'm not going to keep putting it on and off. I'm just showing you the easiest way. You can see that this clutch cover with this insulation here, um, kind of like the seal too. The seal is actually inside of this particular uh, area. So you know what you can do with the seal is you can get some... Uh, uh, a lubricant too that you can put up in here and uh, keep the seal from drying out um, the clutches don't look too bad guys if you look in there get a little better lighting there uh, that's what it's looking like in here so if you haven't looked in there take a look if you look in this area against these plates in this area if you see a lot of like rubber marks which you don't see any in here at all um, it's because your belt's rubbing up in there and you might have an issue with your either your clutch or your belt. You need to make some adjustments or get a different belt. Um, but take the belt off and then clean this area, uh, both sides of the clutch. This clutch I've been blowing out routinely, so there's not a lot of dirt. So we're just going to go ahead and get the blower, blow it out. We'll see what it looks like right now. Um, see if there's a lot of dirt in here. Let's get a regular compressor and just get up in here close. And you see that dust coming out. side of the clutch is probably going to be just as dirty but you can tell this is where the air comes in so initially it might be this side that's a little bit dustier or not okay all blown out cleaned up you can see everything looks pretty good. I mean, you can always take a little rag and wipe down and stuff too. It doesn't hurt. Um, the cleaner, the better. The belt's looking really good, guys. The teeth aren't uh, getting chunked up or worn out in any specific area. doesn't look like it's starting to shred at all. This is the original belt. I haven't changed the belt yet. I'm right at 500 miles on this guy in a year's time. So I haven't uh, really even put too much wear on this machine yet. Um, so yeah, we've got an extra belt just in case, but we haven't had to replace this one. So let's go up top near the coolant and get that cover off and uh, blow out that little area. Okay guys, we'll go ahead and pull this lid off. There's a little handle right here. Just pop that up until it comes off. Just some little prongs that kind of hold it on. It just comes out. We've got a little bit of a tight area because of the spare tire on the cooler. And this right here goes on to the bar. Uh, you can see all the dirt and dust down there already how dirty that is on my finger so yeah it's kind of dusty in there you're gonna want to clean out that area too uh, definitely dust um, blow stuff out now's a good time while we're in here to check our coolant level too and looking at it it looks like our coolant 
then go behind it there you go now if you look down here i know it's kind of hard to get a shot but you see the coolant level now you're know, moving it around it's over it's barely over the max so I, I honestly don't need any coolant which is good the coolant does look pretty uh clear in color it's natural tone so it doesn't look like it's dark or has any issues with uh any types of sludge or anything of that number so guys blow this area out too this has like a screen you can pull this little screen out here it comes out uh there's oh actually i don't want to break it but see this little switch down here there's a little handle if you take that then this whole thing comes out like so and you can see it's just a it's a filter screen but it needs to be blown out and cleaned and then i would blow that area down there because that basically channels the air down into the clutch box through this uh pipe down here and i'll let you guys just get a quick look but this uh area right here it's like intake uh will go uh airflow tube will go down into your clutch box and that's why sometimes this clutch part actually will be dirtier than this side uh, when you go to blow it out but yeah so this filter that i'm showing you guys right here uh, this one is the one that uh, keeps a lot of the dirt. And if you get a particle separator, um, you probably will get little to no dirt in your clutch uh, housing. So um, the only problem with this particular machine and the setup I already have going, as you can see, I don't know if a uh, particle separator would fit in this area. I'm considering it. But for now, I'm going to deal with what I have. I'm going to go ahead and blow this stuff out too. Um, it gets a little bit dusty. Let's see how dirty this one is. I'll come over to the other side here and we'll check it out all right just like that you can just take a rag and wipe it down come back over here Blow that and that's it guys we'll go ahead and put this back together put the clutch uh, cover back on and now we'll head back to the next step um same thing as you guys did before like i said wipe that down stick that back in put the cover and we'll go down and put the clutch back on and we'll come back to our next step okay guys so i took the cooler off just so we have a little more clearance here but yeah this guy just pops off like so the little switch here comes out goes back in real easily you want to make sure that this tube down here lines up with the with this right here down onto that so it snugs up and the air gets through the system to the clutch housing nicely and then there's a little lock here once you get this fitted in there right it just locks in place like so then you're going to put your cover back on that goes over the poles you can see just slide that in there's two little grommets like here and here and then two little nubs that go down in there and that's what locks this in place so just like that and then you're good to go up here so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head down to the bottom again and we're going to just put the uh, clutch cover back on and then get uh, the air filter off and uh, blown out. Sometimes these are tricky to slide back in, you know. All right, guys, so once you get it lined up, I'm just going to slide it smoothly up under this, get that over the hole there, and this should slide. See this area? You want to get that lined up right. Once you get it lined up, it'll slide on over the top of this. Sometimes the seam on the bottom here is a little bit tricky. Once it is lined up, it'll just sit like that and your strap will just make sure that's all the way down. Then you don't really have to hold it, it'll hold itself. So it makes it easier to just get your screws back on. I'm not gonna show you this part. You guys know how to put screws back in, but yeah, same thing. We'll come right back and do the air filter. All right, so we went ahead and put the clutch housing back together, the lid back on. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the air filter out now. So this is the air filter area. It's a little bit tight. You got, I think, four clips or three. No, four. So there's one back here you won't be able to see. But you reach back here and you'll feel one of these guys. So just take these off. Push them all forward. And the back back here. If we get to this one, there it is. And this is going to pop off like so. And if it doesn't come off, then you need to lift these clips up like that. And then that will release it from holding on to the housing so there it is that kind of slips out like not so you know you can do is you can actually even leave it there if you wanted to um filter it just pops off guys it's not really like screwed on or nothing um i'm probably going to use this filter one more time before i change it because i don't feel like you need to change it every single time 
Most of the time you just clean these guys out when they're looking a little bit dull, uh, get another one. Uh, just blow them out gently, get the dust out. Blow out your area in here, you can wipe it out with a rag, wipe out the lid or whatever. And then this will just pop back on. You can upgrade your air filters and if you get the particle separator you probably won't see a lot of dirt in none of these. So uh, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to look into getting the separator later if I can make sure it fits up in that area. But yeah, so just take your uh, hose and just gently blow it out. I do it from the inside, guys, out. So you're not blowing the dirt back into the center. You can still do it like this on an angle. That way it gets it off. Yeah, just do that, clean that up, and then we'll get it back into the area, and then that's it for the air filter. It's a little dusty, and that's natural, guys. You're going to get dust no matter what. But it's not, like, completely laced to the point of no return. I'm going to stop by my dealership and pick one up this week, and then I'll just pop it in, but this will work for now. All right, so there's where the air filter goes in. Um, you can take a rag and wipe this out if you want. Mine's not too bad. When I go to put the new one in next week, um, that's when I'll just give it a better wipe down. But yeah, once you get this guy done, it's just going to slide in. It just kind of snugs the, the hole over the little tube in here. So, once you get it up in there, and you just push it in like so, and it just holds in place like that. So, it's pretty easy. Um, if you don't take this cover off out of that area all the way, then it's probably going to be a little bit easier to get it back on when you're done like so. So go ahead and Alright, so we got it back on. It's a little bit tricky sometimes. But that's it on that. So yeah, so we've already done the clutch cleaning, uh blowing out the dirt, did it to the air filter. We checked the antifreeze cooling up uh top, got the screen cleaned out up there as well. So we're done with this. Now we're gonna go ahead and look for some grease zerks. We'll go ahead and grease all the zerks next. And uh, we'll just continue down the checklist. All right, guys. So the next step that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to grease the Zerks. Um, you can see this is a grease Zerk right down in here. Uh, that guy right there is where we'll grease. Uh, there's a bunch of them that are up on the front of your machine. And not a bunch, I'd say a few of them. Um, and then there's some here in the rear. So you want to check everywhere um, on your machine. It may be different from machine to machine, but... Um, if you miss some of them, they'll start wearing faster. You'll find that you want to look down on your radius rod area and look down in the back. You want to look everywhere that uh, you would have type of like a moving knuckle or something like, you know, like uh, this sway bar link right here. Um, sometimes they have the grease dirks on the back. This one doesn't, they're sealed. So we won't be doing any greasing on that. But if you come up to the front of the vehicle, it's right down in this area. If you look right there, you can see that there's a uh, grease zerk and sitting right here. So on this A-arm, you're going to have two of them. There's one there and then there's one back here, which is hard to see. But if you look down here where my finger is, you can see there's one right there too. So um, you want to look around, like I said. I'm not going to go over every zerk. You guys just, you know, learn your machine a little bit and check all the lower ball bearing areas and um any where you have like a sway or a pivot area like this on all your frames like down here if you look on your lower arms you can see down in that area i know it's hard to see with my hand in the way we'll get a better shot there let's see can we see it They're right down in there you can see that blue that's the grease coming out of that zerk there's one on this part of the arm there's another one way down here uh, and then you have some on the sway bar back there and so you want to check all your um Zerks, make sure you get them greased. Uh, let me just show you the grease that I use, which is over here. Um, what I'm using, and I use this for other machines too, not just this one, is I use this mini grease gun, and it's the Amsel Oil Synthetic Water Resistant Grease, Marine Power Sport Trailers, and so on. It gives you a list of everything. It's a little mini grease gun. As you can see, the tube's really tiny, so. And it's a blue grease. Um, there's other BRP brands, and I'm sure other things you can do. But essentially, you just want to get your grease zerk. I know it's a little bit hard to see right here. Maybe with the light on at a different angle, I can still let you guys see. But yeah, you just take your 
the end of your grease gun and you want to twist this a little bit to loosen it. Yeah, so this was jammed, so I just unjammed it, but yeah, that should spin. The looser the uh, it is, the wider the hole is, so depending on the size of the Zerk on your machine, you don't want it to where you stick it on there, and then you go to pull it off and it won't let go of the Zerk because you can break the Zerk head off. And uh, you're just gonna, it's kind of hard to see, but let me hold the light up. Usually you just want to grease it till you see a little bit of grease coming out of the sides right here. I just greased this, so I'm not going to re-grease all of them for you guys. Right now I'm just going to do this one. You can see. There it is. It's popping up right there. Pay attention. See how it's oozing out? So you want to stop right there. You don't want to make a mess. And if you can't get this off like I'm pulling, turn it. Loosen it up. You can turn this to the right, which actually loosens it. Um, and then it'll pop right off the zerk. So when you're done with that, I would recommend just take a paper towel, you know, come in here, wipe down your grease zerk, wipe down the edge that just oozed out because over time this starts to dribble off everywhere and get on your uh, arms down here and then you have a big old dirt mess of grease everywhere. So yeah, clean it up, but do all your zerks like that. So that's how you do your zerks, get you a grease gun. I would do the Zerks probably every other ride or something, just check them, it doesn't hurt anything. It keeps everything really nice and greased, so. Okay, so now it's time to do the oil. We went ahead and did the uh, air filter, we did the clutch housing, uh, we checked the coolant, um, we greased the Zerks. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chalk, I always chalk the front of the wheel. Because if I end up jacking up the back for any reason doing the oil, then at least the unit won't roll forward. So it's kind of just a small preparation. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our line here, or line, but our uh, funnel and our, our drain hose here, we're gonna make it to fit to size. I did put this uh, toolbox slash cooler slash whatever you wanna call this and storage box back on, but I'm gonna take it off one more time. You can see how easy that is. If you haven't seen the video on this, uh, cooler check it out I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can see that video pretty cool but the idea here is to get a hose from your funnel down to the fill plug below which is down here and I don't know if you guys can see it but we'll try to take a quick look uh, yeah it's up top here so it's really hard to see but there's a yellow lid sits right back in here and if you look down in there that's it so we're going to take this out. There's your dipstick. I'll just set that somewhere where you don't get it all oily or end up losing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to measure the area for this hose. I'm gonna stick the hose to the top. If you look up here, this hose is a little bit thick, but it still works. You can just stick the hose through the top of this down below. And that's where it's gonna go, is right to the area of the dipstick. So once you get it through there, you wanna look down here. And depending on where the best position or point of entry is, you wanna pull it out and put it in that area. I don't know if that's gonna be it or not. Let's see. Yeah. So if you guys can see here, I'm pulling my hose down, right? This is the first time I'm gonna use it. Here's the fill area down in that hole down in this area. That's where the dipstick was. All right, so right down in there, you can see there's the fill area and there's the end of the hose. So we're gonna just get it snug in there and it fits snug. See how it sits in there? This 5 8 fits in there perfect. Don't push on this uh, little area where you're putting your dipstick too hard. You don't wanna crack it or break it, but just snug that hose in there and you can see it comes up right up through the grate up top up here. Now look. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to measure it because I don't know how long I wanted it, but I'm thinking Maybe right about here with the funnel on, or maybe a little bit lower, just so I have room to lift the court. So this is something to think about. I think I'm gonna do it right about there. So let me grab a little saw and we'll cut it real quick. And then it'll be ready to go and then you'll have it for future use. So just get any type of a little saw or if you have like a blade, the idea is to do it straight. I'm just gonna cut it, so. And you guys can find funnels with these lines on it. I'm thinking right about there. And this other second piece will be just as long, so I can always come back and use it again. Let's try to do it straight. 
gonna right through that bad boy like so. There it is. So we'll save this extra hose for something else. So I need that later, then we have that. Now, there it is. And it still has enough room. It's not pinched to where the oil can't drain down into the... Then the, this 5 8 fits over my funnel beautifully, this 5 8 hose, so I can just wedge it in there just a little bit. And there it is. When I'm doing my oil, I'll just sit here and dump the quartz in. And you can see that down below again, right in this area, there it is. The hose is going right into the oil fill area. And it comes right up. So what's kind of cool about this setup, using this 5 8 hose and stuff, is just because when you're using this hose right here, this 5 8 um, it kind of wedges in all the areas to where it holds it in place for you. So the, the line right here is not loose. Um, and then it, it kind of keeps it up. So it's not leaning down, draining everywhere, and you can just move it up. Then you'll essentially just be doing it with the quartz. So that's the first part of the preparation. Next thing we're going to do is, depending on you or the height of your vehicle, you can take your jack, put a block on top of your jack, jack up the back, and then let it back down, and it'll stay in place raised up. Because until you start moving the vehicle back or forward, um, you, the, the suspension is not going to level back out. So it'll stay up. My vehicle is already down, as you can see. I haven't even lifted it up, and I can fit under there just easy enough to do the oil with just fine. I just wanted to show you guys that. So yeah, jack it up. Once it's up, then just lower, lower the jack. The jack will come down, but the machine will stay up, and that will give you some extra clearance, uh, thus making it easier to get to the drain plugs. We'll come right back in a second once we set up to get those drain plugs removed. All right, guys, so here's the area where your drain plugs are going to be. You're going to have a number 10 drain plug and a number 17. They're going to be right down in this area, and I'm trying to get to where I can show you, but right here, up under here, is the two drain plugs. You have a number 10 and a number 17 right there. What you're going to do is you're going to take this little big mouth funnel, and you can see that's exactly what it says there, but use the yellow one. It's just easier to see when you're getting in this dark area. Um, you want to have the funnel... You're going to get it up in there first like this, and once you get it in there, you're going to turn it this way and rest it in place. And that's going to cause this uh, deeper end to get up right under the oil trail where it's coming down so you don't miss and get oil all over the bottom of your skid plate. So just push this down in there like so, like that, and leave it to rest. What we're going to do first is we're going to get under there with our ratchet wrench and our sockets, and we're going to break the uh, oil drain plugs, the number 10 and number 17, loose just a little bit. Um, you want to do that so that way when you go to take them out completely to drain the oil You're not having to do it with a wrench and you keep going until it hopefully doesn't just fall out into uh, the uh, Funnel and then it'll plug the funnel up and then you'll have oil flowing up over the funnel all over the place So the idea is to just loosen them Put the funnel in place take the number 10 out first then we'll take the number 17 which where all the oil is going to come rushing out and we'll put our oil drain pan below so it catches the oil from the funnel. So let's start it. Let me get my sockets here. And like I said, guys, this, you'll be looking through the same areas I just showed you why I come from the bottom to get the drain plugs. And let me find them there. Those are kind of tiny. I expected them to look bigger than that, but I guess they're not. So, yeah, as you can see, this is going to go up. That's going to fit right over yep, the number 17 and the number 10. And you guys can use a little swivel socket too, but you should have enough clearance. I use my little swivel uh, extensions, which you can see that the end of the socket is wobbly. Well, that's cool because I can uh, move it around and get the swivel I need. So I'm going to go ahead and just barely break the number 10 first loose. Keep your drain pan close by in case you just have a, a mishap and you accidentally take it off too much and then end up spilling it. It's leaking. At least it can drain somewhat into the oil pan. And like I said, just barely get it going. And that broke it loose pretty easily. So that's number 10. It doesn't take much, guys. You don't have to really unscrew it a lot. Just... Break it loose and then it's usually good enough to do by hand the rest of the way. So we'll go with the number 17 next. 
And guys, the drain plugs, you can't see it from right there, but they're right next to each other. Literally, I think the number 10 is designed to cause oil um, or airflow to go into the area, thus making the oil come out faster from your number 17, because putting them right next to each other, you would think they'd be in the same opening. So you would only need one plug, but I think that's the theory behind that. I'm not sure if you're a BRP technician, you probably know the real answer to that, but that's what I'm assuming. So I've gone ahead, as you can see, and I've broken both of them loose. There's no oil leaking out, so don't do them anymore, but right here has both of these two plugs. So what I'm gonna do is get the funnel in place now. And that's what's great about this yellow funnel. See, I don't even need to be up there. I can just reach in and grab this thing and then it's a little bit harder to see it, but if you can get it, you want the little nub, just like that. As you can see, now when I unscrew both of these screws by hand, the oil is going to come down right into that funnel. I want to turn it that way a little bit. There we go. So that gives me room. Now you're not going to really be able to see me do this, guys. I'm going to take the first one off which is the number 10 and I'm gonna do it to where I can see and I can get in there conveniently because if I miss this and it drops down uh, in there then we're gonna have problems here so actually I can get better from right here yeah so we're gonna do the number 10 first you're probably gonna get oil on your hand and if you do no big deal it's part of the deal you know when you're changing oil but be careful guys this is the part where you don't want to drop it. it's just a tight area real tight so you actually got to use your fingers to get it like i'm doing spinning it and it's a long little bolt so there's the number 10. make sure you got your pan under there ready to go you can adjust but you can see it's already dripping and if you look below here you can see down the oil is just dripping down out of the first and that's the number 10 this little tiny plug so yeah use the number 10 there but you're gonna get some residual out so put your plugs close by safely don't uh don't lose them because you definitely don't want to lose them <laughs> i don't know if the dealers always have these on hand and uh yeah that would suck Let's see if i can get up under here like that there we go yeah guys this is tricky they make a mess here you can see this already if you don't do it I'm getting that number 10 out here we go there it is all right so you can see now it's really pouring out if you look below that's what we want is that number 10 and you don't but that's the number 17 I, I apologize the number 10 was the first one with the number 17 um yeah so it's dripping and if you look through the top there you can see it dripping out of both of the outlets the both drain plug holes so anyway, you want to go ahead and just let that drain out. You're going to get some residual. I didn't get very much at all. In fact, the only residual I really spilt was whatever I got on my hand that dripped off of my hand onto the frame there. But otherwise, it's dripping out good. And it's going into the drain pan just fine. Um, on your plugs, so now that we're talking about this, these two plugs right here, and we'll see if we can get a good focus on them. But yeah, they have little seals on them, little gaskets. You have a little copper one on this one. Then you have a, a little silver one on that one. Um, the replacement kit comes with those, so make sure to swap those out. Um, also on the oil filter cap, there's a seal on there that it comes with, a rubber one. So you're gonna replace that one too. So there's three of them. I'm gonna put these in my little thing there. So right here, is the kit and uh it comes with four quarts of oil comes with your oil filter which that's what it looks like so oil filter here's the little seals and gaskets i was talking about there's the two that go on the the drain plug and this one will actually go around the lid of your oil filter housing <clears throat> and then you have four quarts 3.7 quarts is what this machine requires so we're going to go ahead and let this finish draining we'll come back to you guys in a second once we get ready to put the gaskets on um and uh we'll go ahead and get ready to start taking off the oil filter lid as well all right guys so here's your <clears throat> oil filter cap there's three bolts here these are eight millimeter um three of them so you'll just come in here like so 
put your wrench over that. Let me see if I can get you a little bit better lighting here. Yeah, just like that. Once you get your wrench on top of it, you're just gonna loosen these up, which I already kind of did. Move them by hand as far as they'll go. This one as well. And I can probably do them by hand just about, hopefully. If not, oh, yeah, by finger. They're real tiny, but I can still get my sausage fingers in there. So what I did is I put a bunch of paper towels around this. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that one way or another, the oil is going to spill off of that all over the place and I'm not gonna be able to help it. So what I am gonna do though, is get another paper towel kind of ready right here. So when I do come out with the oil filter, I have something to catch all that. And then again, guys, keep your little bolt tray close so you can put your three bolts. It's just kind of like when you're breaking a oil filter loose on a vehicle, there's gonna be residual coming out. So this is where it gets a little bit messy again. These bolts are about yay long. Oops, turned off my light. There it is. It's kind of a tight area, but there's the first bolt. So get all three of those off like that. And then we'll take the oil filter lid off. I, from what I've read, the oil filter is going to attach to the lid and that's how you'll take it off and put it back on. Um, you won't just drop the oil filter in there and put the lid on. I guess you can, it'll squeeze together anyways, but they're saying to put it onto the lid is what the manual says from what I read. So there it is, let's take it off. There it is. See what I mean? Right away you want to capture it, bring it out, and then there it is right here. And see how it's attached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set it down here for a second. I'll show it to you guys in a minute when we go to change it. Um, I did uh, get the new one with the gasket kit like I mentioned earlier. So let's take a minute to look at these. So here it is again. So we're just going to take these out. Be careful you don't lose none of these in the process of putting the other ones on. So here's the two that I showed you earlier, which are uh, the copper and the metal one. This is for the number 10 volt. This is for the number 17 volt, which I have right here on my hands. So it's real easy. I'll just take the 17 off, put it to the side. Take the new 17, slide it right on. Take the copper one off of that one. Put the new copper one right back on. And there's the two old ones. I can just save those. And now my two bolts are ready to go. So I'm gonna get ready to put those back on since we got the oil filter out. <clears throat> that way I can show you guys the oil filter lid and how to install the oil filter. Once we get that on, we can put the lid back on. Make sure the plugs are torqued to spec. Um, all the gaskets are in place and then we can add the oil um, and then once that's done uh, that concludes the service for this uh, 500 mile service change all right guys so there's the old filter the filter's pretty dirty um, it just locks in place there's really no certain way but you see how that came off so there it is pretty dirty but the oil itself you can see in there is not too bad I mean look at it I don't mind touching it but look at the oil there See it on the napkin now? It's really not that dirty, but it doesn't hurt to get this thing done at 500. That's the dealer recommendation. The book says, uh, depending on the climate you're in, if it's a real dusty and dirty climate, you wanna do it every thousand or 50 hours. Um, if you're more in like a wooded area where you're not in sand dunes and a lot of fine dust and stuff, and it's more just like a little bit of mud and stuff, you're probably just rinsing that off. It's not getting in your intake and then your motor is bad. Uh, they say every 2,000 miles or 100 hours. So it's either 1,050, 1,000 miles, 50 hours, or 2,000 miles, 100 hours. I'm doing this first 50. I'll do it again at 1,000, and then I'll do it at every 1,000 after that for here because we live in a desert slash mountainous area, but I'm mostly on mesa areas and dirt roads. So. Now you're going to take your old gasket off. You can see it just sits right there, it kind of sits on there. And there's the old one right there, right? So then just put your new one right back on. And you know, it doesn't hurt to take this gasket and dip it in some oil. 
just gets it primed and ready to go to seal. So there's a lot of oil down here on the pan, so I'm gonna get it just nice and oily and then slide that thing right back on there like so. Make sure you push it all the way down, all the way around. Keep you a fresh paper towel so you can clean the top again. So there's that. So I already put the two drain plugs back in. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to show you. You take them out. They're two different sizes, so they'll only fit where they came out of right. So you don't have to wonder which one goes in what slot because they're both different sizes. So I'm cleaning that up real well. So there we go. So then you're gonna take your new oil filter. Ooh, before you dent it up and get it all messed up, get it back in the lid. And it's kind of tricky guys, but it just, you don't want to force it too crazy and, and, and uh, end up, uh, what do you call it? Bending the filter screens by pushing it and smashing it. So don't smash it. Just take your time and move it around until you get it on. And there it is. Simple as that. As you can see, it just sits in there really nicely. So then you're going to put it back on top. Let's work our way back up to the top here. Put the three screws back in and get that in. And then uh, we'll be able to tighten everything down, the bolts, drain plugs, or whatnot, and just make sure. So this guy's just going to go right back in here like so. You want to make sure that you get it with the right screws. I think they're all equally uh apart as you can see what i'm saying so that way there's no real perfect way you can spin it to the next side like if i want to do it this way instead as you can see they all line up correctly either way so yeah just get it on and then get your three started by hand i always say started by hand because if you take a an electric wrench or something and just start screwing it in you may not feel that it's not threading right and then you'll just uh, cross thread everything and then you'll have a problem so it's better to just get these started by hand and I don't mind showing you guys thoroughly how to do this a lot of people just skip through and explain it but for those new those newcomers that haven't ever done this they want to see everything so they know where they're going with it and funny is I'm a newcomer myself this is my first UTV and if you haven't tuned in I have a lot of other videos a lot of installation videos for accessories and whatnot. So if you guys are interested in a lot of accessories, light bars, signature lights, whip lights, uh, radio, I have all that on this channel. Just go to the video link in the on the channel and uh, the video tab and you can see all my videos. So there it is. So <clears throat> remember guys, when you're done uh, putting this all back together, you're gonna wanna make sure that you uh, you basically check everything under pressure in other words turn on your machine once you get all the oil set right and all your oils up to the right level and everything's back in order uh, you definitely want to to turn the, the machine on and check to make sure you're not oozing out any oil around here make sure you put this back on right I'm kind of old school with it um, I should be checking my torque I'm just gonna at least get them down a little bit I'll get a better lighting there yeah, oh, that one's kind of not tight enough. There we go. I'll just wait till I feel it to barely start to tighten, and then I'll just back off because I don't want to torque it. I want to get it to spec because there is a gasket in there, and if you smash that lid down too much by torquing it too much, it may not seal right. So check your out your book. I'll see if I can find uh, the torque spec on that, um, and then uh, make sure you just torque it down the spec. Usually you can just tighten these. You know what I mean? They're gonna tighten like firm like that. That's firm. If you don't know have a torque wrench, just firm it up. Don't don't crank on that sucker. You can always come back and firm it up a little bit more. So it's better to just do it a little bit at a time than to over crank it and then tear up your gasket or your lid. So I'm just taking it easy here. I feel like we're about there anyway. Kinda through all of my life I've never really used torque specs on an oil cap or but when you're dealing with aluminum it's kind of a good idea so we're gonna go ahead and leave it at that we'll check out the specs if we can find them um, we're gonna get up under there and tighten the two drain plugs completely and then uh, let's get ready to add the oil all right so let's get some oil in here 10w50 xps it's a brp brand it's full synthetic um, great for this machine 
for deserty areas, dry, not too cold. So what we'll do is we'll pour some in here and we'll test this out to make sure, as you can see. Now, if you look below, you'll be able to tell whether or not it's spilling out. It's kind of hard to see on camera view, but you can see the point of it is. And I wouldn't rush the quartz down in there, guys. Just dump it slowly. How's that looking down there? It's good. Awesome. So yeah, so the oil is flowing in and we'll get three full quarts in to start. And uh, once we do that, then we'll get ready for that last half a quart and we'll start checking it little by little because we don't want to mess up. See what I mean by how this hose will hold it up a little bit so you're not getting residual and I'm going to take a look myself. And it's really clean guys, really clean down there. Right in this area down here. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see that hose is going right down into the fill neck. And uh, that fill neck right there, as you can see, uh, right down where the hose goes in is where the oil is going down into. And I'm not having any issues right now. You can see right here uh, with it leaking out. So that's good. It's a good sign. Good start. So let's just go ahead and we'll get the rest of these quartz in, guys. Once again, just Keep a little rag right here under the funnel so if it does lean over and drip, you're not making a mess. But yeah, it's a simple procedure. A lot of people, they get stuff like this going or they go to actually do this for the first time because they're not like uh, regular UTV uh, type people that have UTVs and they're always servicing, working on them. That's their life. People that do this is their lives. You know, this is nothing. This is just an oil change. But for you new people, this is the way I did it for my first oil change. This is the tools and the setup I used. As you can see, everything went pretty smooth. Uh, no major issues uh, to account for. Uh, we'll give it a good start and check the oil fill cap. We'll check the oil filter lid after we're done. And uh, we'll also check the drain plugs to make sure we don't see any streams of oil leaking out once we get the machine under pressure. Okay guys, so we we anticipated 3.7. We put a little bit more than we should have been, so we just drained a little bit out. Got it back to the right level, I'm pretty sure. Now we'll check it. Always make sure it's right though. Don't, don't just leave it. So if you look there, we're right on the max line. You could be in between there or right at the max. So. I'm sure when you're burning oil, because you're, you know, whomping around on this machine, you're going to uh, burn a little bit of oil down anyway, so it's right there at the max line. You can have it just a little bit below the max line in between that safe area, but yeah, so it's full. We got the drain plugs back on right, we got the oil filter cap back on right, we've showed you guys. Um, pretty much all the other services um, that I think uh, would be sufficient for your 500 mile oil change. You know, going and doing the grease circs, the uh, air filter, the clutch housing. Um, just doing an overall check of your sway bar links, um, your radius rods, your CV joints. You just want to kind of grab everything and check them out, move them around. Make sure that there's no... Uh, no loose nuts or anything. If you come to take your uh, sway bar link and it starts wobbling around, you're gonna wanna tighten up the nuts. Uh, the same for the front. Come up to your A-arms and your CV joints and stuff and just kinda move on them. Everything there is tight. So from that, with that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, call it a video here. Um, I appreciate you guys logging in and tuning in today, however you got to the channel. Um, we're going to be doing another video coming up soon. It's going to be another new MRE video. Pretty cool one, so stay tuned for that video. Um, as far as uh, the machine goes, pretty self-explanatory. Go over the video, rewind, whatever you got to do. I'll put some links uh, for the clips so you guys can go into different parts if you don't need to see everything we did today. I do appreciate you guys once again tuning in to a review of TV. Until next time, we'll see you there.